For this training, we're just going to go over your basic constitutional rights in dealing with the cops. This is rights that apply to everybody in the country. Doesn't matter if you were born here, if you're an immigrant, if you have papers, if you're old, you're young. If you are on U.S. soil, these constitutional rights apply to you. Um, so we're not lawyers, right? We don't give legal advice. None of this training is legal advice. It's just we did our research, um, and you know anybody can be self-educated. You can be too, and I hope that the info that we have in this training will uh, help you on your way to that. We believe that the information in this training, knowing and asserting your rights, is your best bet to protect yourself. Whether the cops are going to violate the law or not, it's your best bet to stay out of jail, or if you do get arrested, it's your best bet to protect yourself in court later on, and your best bet to hold crooked cops accountable later down the line. There's three key phrases that we're going to be using a lot during this training. The first one is, am I being detained or am I free to go? Can I get everybody to say that with me? Am I being, am I being detained, detained or am I free to go? Second is, I do not consent to a search. I do not, I do not consent, consent to a search. And the third is, I am going to remain silent, I want to see a lawyer. I'm going, I'm going to remain silent, silent. I, want I want to see a lawyer. lawyer. Now we're going to be getting into the specifics of when and why you use these phrases, but this is basically the complete manual of things that you need to say to the police. Uh, for now, let's start with our first skit, in which I am walking through the park, minding my own business, when I encounter a stranger. Let's see what happens. Hey, hey you. Yeah? yeah. Do you want to buy some weed? Um, well, I mean, I don't know you. You could be a cop or something. No, look at me. I'm not a cop. Here, I'll prove it to you. Here, you want to try some? Yeah, like this? Yeah. You smoke it? Yeah, totally. Uh, that's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, 20 bucks. <coughs> um, 20 bucks? Okay, here you go. Thanks. All right. You're under arrest for buying narcotics from an undercover agent, and you're going downtown. <sighs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Cops can and do lie. Um, Cops can commit crimes, and they can participate in planning crimes. Do you think um, I, that Marlon could probably use an entrapment defense for that? Yes. No, at, no actually not. Um, what you just saw was not entrapment. Entrapment is a really difficult defense to use. You'd have to um, prove that the cop coerced you into committing a crime. You also just don't have to worry about cops. There's also like informants. Um, Undercover. So if you are going to do like do risky behavior or talk about risky things, you should do it with somebody that you know and trust. Cool. So we're not going to repeat that skit. We're just going to go right into the next one, in which Earthworm here is walking home from the mall late at night. Hey, you. Come here. What me? Yeah. But I didn't do anything. No, no, you're not in any trouble. I just want to ask you a few questions. Okay. So, uh, there's a lot of graffiti around this area, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. You don't know anything about that, though, right? Yeah. Oh, you do? No, I mean, yeah, I don't know anything about it. Put your hands up on the wall. But I don't do anything. Put your hands on the wall. <laughs> pat, 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 pat. All right, open your bag for me. I don't have anything on me. Open the bag. Do I have to? Just open the backpack. Let's see what you got in here. Aha! You want to tell me what this is? Hmm. Um, <laughs> look, I, my friend brought in my backpack. I guess it's theirs. I didn't, I didn't even know that was in there. <clears throat> All right. You seem like a good kid, right? Not in any trouble. You you don't even smoke marijuana, right? Right. You're just carrying this for a friend. You got caught in the wrong place in the wrong time. Right. Okay. Exactly. All right. Well, you're under arrest for possession of drug paraphernalia. You're going down, child. So what did I do wrong in that situation? I stopped and talked. I stopped and talked to him. Good. What else? Consent. I consented to a search. Good. What else? Right, I, I incriminated myself. Right, good. There's three types of interactions that you can be in with police. 
um, their voluntary conversation, detention, and arrest. Um, and there are different levels of interaction. So for voluntary conversation, that's just a simple conversation between you and a cop. Any cop can approach you and just say, you know, it's a nice day out, isn't it? Or where were you on the night of the third? They don't need to have any reason to be able to justify doing that. However, you're allowed to leave anytime you want. And that's what we recommend doing. Now detention, that's when you're not free to go. Now a cop is allowed to detain you if they have what's called a reasonable suspicion that you've committed some crime or that you're about to commit some crime. It's just a legal term, meaning that they have something that they suspect you of that they can say they thought you were up to no good. Now it can be very vague, but they do have to have something specific. It can't just be like, oh, well, I thought he looked sketchy, or I, I had a hunch about this guy. It has to be something specific that they can say they thought you were doing. When you're being detained, you're not free to go. However, they can't detain you forever. They can only detain you for a set period of time, long enough to investigate that suspicion that they have. After that, they have to let you go or else arrest you. Now, the point of detaining you is to figure out enough evidence to make that arrest, right? They're not detaining you just because they want to spend time with you. Um, so the best way for them to get that evidence is something that you tell them that you inadvertently say that you didn't realize was going to give them that evidence that they needed to arrest you. Now when you're being arrested, everybody knows what that means. You're going downtown, you're getting your fingerprints taken, you're getting booked, that whole bit. Now in order to arrest you, they need a higher bar of suspicion than that reasonable suspicion that they needed to um, detain you. In order to arrest you, they need some solid evidence, um, and the legal wording is called probable cause. How do you know in any given situation with the cop whether you're being in a voluntary conversation, detained, or arrested? How do you figure that out? Ask. Ask. Good. And what do you ask? Am I being detained? Perfect. All right. And you may need to ask this multiple times, right? Because the cop may be cagey about it, may not just bust out with like, well, you're actually not being detained, but I'd really rather you stay and talk to me as long as I want you to. So you, and they may pretend not to hear, or they may pretend to get angry, or so on and so forth. So you do need to be kind of assertive with this, and just keep asking if you're being detained until you actually are free to go, at which point you what? Go. <laughs> Even if you are being detained, remember, they eventually have to let you go, right? They can detain you for a set period of time, and that period varies from place to place, but it's never going to be days. It's going to be like an hour or two hours. So if you do get detained, keep asking, am I free to go now? Am I free to go now? You know, every little while, because they may hit a limit that, you know, they have to let you go by. And they may not just tell you that. So, uh, so keep asking. Now, like I said, the reason that they're trying to detain you or they're trying to talk to you is in order to gather evidence against you, in order to bring it up to the next level, to, to make that arrest. So, and the best way for them to get that is something that you tell them. So what we say in the training is the best thing to say to cops is nothing at all. And that's probably the most important lesson. If you take nothing else away from this training, at least remember, don't talk to the cops. Don't talk to the cops. Don't talk to the cops. You don't have to talk to the cops, and you shouldn't talk to the cops. Now, there's one exception to this rule. If you are being detained, and how do you know if you're being detained? Yes. Yes. If you're being detained, you have to identify yourself to the police. Uh, this means that if you're carrying a government ID card, you got to turn it over to the police. Um, if you're not carrying an ID card, that's okay. You're not legally required to carry ID in the state of Georgia yet. Um, <laughs> but you do have to provide enough information to identify yourself. Um, and that generally means you have to give your name, your address. Uh, if you're homeless, you can say you're homeless. Um, and maybe your date of birth, but nothing more than that. Now, the police may tell you that you have to give them more information, but they're lying. And as we learned in the first skit, cops are allowed to lie to you. Uh, you do not have to give any other information. And if the police ask you to answer more questions, uh, the best thing that you can say is, I'm going to remain silent. Um, and if they continue to badger you, just say it again. Say it as many times as it takes for them to get the message. Now, the second thing that went wrong in that scenario with, with Earthworm is um, she ended up letting the cops search her. Now, with a pat-down, the police do not need um, very much justification at all. Uh, the law says if a cop has detained you 
and they believe that you could be armed and dangerous, they're allowed to conduct a pat down without your permission or any further uh, you know, suspicion or anything. So they're touching the outside of your clothes to feel for like objects that could feel like weapons. If they feel anything that either could be a weapon or arouses their suspicion for some reason, they're allowed to go into your pocket or into your whatever and take that thing out. For anything beyond a pat down, um, they generally need either probable cause, some kind of evidence that, you know, like some kind of justification to arrest you or search you further, or they need your consent. And consent is usually what the cops are looking for. They're not going to come to you and, and ask you, like, excuse me, ma'am, I would like to conduct a search. Will you grant me consent to do so? No. Nah. They're going to come and they're going to say something like, you don't mind if I take a look in that bag, right? Now, how do you answer that question? Not consent to a search. Exactly. Whenever the question of a search comes up, say this. Sounds kind of goofy. Sounds kind of lawyer's. But I do not consent to a search makes it very clear that you're not agreeing to be searched. Um, and again, even with a pat down, even if you think that they may have a justification or you're not sure if they're allowed to be searching you or not, still say it because it can never hurt you to, to vocally refuse a search. Another thing to keep in mind is that you may accidentally agree to a search without even saying anything. So for example, Earthworm never told me that I could search her bag, but when I asked her to open the bag, she opened it. Even if they're just asking, like, what do you have on you there? What's in your bag? Anything like that. Break this phrase out as soon as possible. And when you say it, say it loudly and clearly so that anybody around you can hear that you didn't consent to a search, because that could be important later. If you're detained, the police do have the right to um, sort of control where your body is and how it's positioned, right? So if a cop tells you stop while you're being detained, you have to stop. If a cop tells you put your hands up, put your hands on against the wall, things like this, you do have to comply with that. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're allowed to force you to allow a search. We're going to repeat this skit um, with a volunteer from the audience taking the place of Earthworm as the, as the victim here. Um, what should that person do differently this time around to assert their rights and not get busted? Ask if they're being detained? Yeah, right up front, ask if you're being detained. Um, what, what if you are being detained and the cop wants to try to like, look through your stuff? Like, yeah, and what if they're like badgering you, asking you questions? Yeah, and then what if they're like holding you for a long time trying to waste your time? Keep asking if you're free to go. Exactly. Uh, cool. So who wants to give it a try? All right. Action. Hey, you. Come here. There's a there's a lot of graffiti around this area, huh? Am I being detained or am I free to go? Yeah, you are being detained. I'm uh, suspicious of you walking around this time of night. Now, you want to tell me what you know about the graffiti on that corner? Do you want to tell me what you know about the graffiti on that corner? I have nothing to say to you, officer. Am I free to go? No, you're not free to go. Put your hands up against the wall. Now, why aren't you answering my questions? Is it a problem for you to, to explain yourself? Am I free to go? Pat, 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 pat. Open your backpack for me. I do not consent to a search. Look, I don't need to conduct a search, I just need to look inside your backpack. I don't consent to a search. Is that a problem for you? What do you have in the backpack? I don't consent to a search. Am I free to go? Sir, you're acting extremely suspicious here. I need to see what's inside that backpack to make sure that we're okay. I do not consent to a search. Am I free to go? <sighs> yes, you're free to go. Get out of here. Okay, in this sketch, Caroline is driving. I'm driving. Caroline is driving me home from a wicked party. And action. All right. Oh All my right. Goodness, that was so fun. <laughs> that was wicked. Uh, <laughs> oh, shoot. No, I can go to jail. I can go to jail. Yeah. Right. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God. Hello, officer. How are you this evening? Hello. Uh, you know why I pulled you over? Um, 
You might have been speeding a little bit back there. Yeah, and I think you maybe ran that stop sign too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Uh, license and registration, please. So, uh, where are you coming from tonight? Just coming from a party. Yeah. A uh, party, right. Mm -hmm. uh, was it a good party? Yeah. 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 Well, it wasn't that one uh, four blocks down here that we just busted, yeah. was it? Yeah. What? Um, no. <laughs> the car smells a little funny in here. Oh, we don't um, smoke marijuana. <laughs> I didn't say anything about marijuana. Um, I'm going to have to ask you two to exit the vehicle. Uh, so, uh... Look, I'm, I'm going to have to take a look inside your vehicle. Um, are you allowed to do that? Yeah, it's just real um, quick. It's a routine thing. No problem, right? Um, All right. I... So, uh, <clears throat> what's this? Looks like an open container to me. Um, oh, that's, I'm just kidding. I, I, I mean, I was just driving. <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, fine, though. Like, see. So this is yeah. yours? Um, yeah, yeah, it's mine, but, like, it's empty. It's okay. All right, well, you're under arrest for open container, and you're going downtown. <laughs> so, what did Caroline do wrong in that skit as the driver? Rolled the window all the way down. <laughs> yeah, she rolled her window all the way down. Nice. Nice observation. What else? She automatically incriminated herself. She incriminated herself. Good. She allowed him to search the car. Yes, she allowed a search of the car. What about me? What'd she do wrong with respect to me? Did tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. The minute you realize you're getting pulled over, tell all your passengers, I'll handle this. Don't say a word, because only the driver needs to be talking. And really, the driver's not supposed to be running their mouth. They're just saying uh, the minimum that they need to get through this drive. So, what, what, do you know why I pulled you over? What are they trying to get out of you? An admission. A confession, right. An admission, so that they can use that to write you up. Um, now, when you're driving, you do have to show the cop the papers that make your car legal to drive. You know, here it's your driver's license, your registration, etc. Now, as a passenger, you may be being detained, but you can ask, am I being detained or am I free to go? And you can make your own decision about whether to leave if you want to walk away. Um, that would be your choice. Passengers have the same right as they do anywhere else. Now, if a cop orders you out of the car, like Marlon said, if they order you to do something with your body during a detention, you need to do that. So you do need to step out of the car if they order you out. But one thing that we stress throughout this training is restrict access to your property. Because the more you allow a cop access to your property, the more ability they're going to have to do searches and find stuff or claim they see stuff. So restrict access to your property. One way to do that, roll your window up. Leave a little bit of space, like this much space, to pass papers through and speak through. All the other windows can be up. If they order you out of the car, get out, but close and lock the door behind you and keep your keys on you. One thing that we saw in this skit was when the cop said, I'm going to need to look in your car, Caroline didn't really loudly and clearly state, I do not consent to a search. She was maybe like, oh, are you sure you're allowed to do that? But that doesn't count as you refusing a search. Say this loud and clear. Another thing about restricting access to your car is a law called the Plain View Law. The Plain View Law says, that if the cops can see something from the outside of your car in plain view that they think is illegal, they would be allowed to go in and get that object and use that against you. Um, so if you have something that looks like it might be illegal, you want to keep that well out of sight. When you get pulled over sometimes, one cop will come around the car up to the driver's side window, and the other cop is like going around behind, shining the light all in the back windows and through mm -hmm. the passenger seat. What they're doing there is they're looking for something in plain view, like she talked about. That's why that's important. You should keep your hands on the wheel in plain sight, uh, and that's for two reasons. One, you don't want the cop to be able to say, oh, I saw them reaching for a weapon and I had to defend myself um, and do you some kind of violence. And two, you don't want the cop to be able to say, oh, I saw them hurriedly stuffing something in under the seat and then I had to search under the seat, or I saw them trying to hide something. Um, which could give them, you know, further access to your car. So we're going to repeat this skit with, I'm still going to be your passenger, but uh, so one of you all is going to be Caroline. And what is that person going to do differently as the driver? Tell you to shut up. <laughs> Tell me to shut up. Good. What else? Do not consent to the search. Do not consent to the search. Good. What else? Only partially roll the window down. Roll the window down a little way. Good. And, and how else will you restrict the cop's access to the car? Lock close and lock the door. Yeah. Right, close the door and lock it behind you. Good. 
All right, do we uh, have a volunteer? All right. Okay, look, I need you to be quiet. I'm going to handle this. Is there a problem, officer? Yeah, I need to see your license and registration, please. I need to reach into my glove compartment and get it. All right. Here you go. Thank you. So, uh, you know why I pulled you over? I asked you what the problem was, sir. I don't know what else. You, uh, you ran that stop sign back there. Uh, so where are you coming from tonight? The friends. Oh, yeah? Um, how about you? Is, is this your friend? <laughs> yeah, so where are, you, where are you going to? Home. Your, your house or her house? Huh. <laughs> uh, are, are you alright in there? Yes, I'm fine. You seem a little, uh, nervous. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, can both of you get out of the vehicle for me? I noticed you, uh, you closed and locked your door there. Is something wrong? I'll have it. So, uh, here's the situation. Um, I need to take a look inside your car just really quickly to uh, make I sure that you don't have any like uh, major illegal things going on in there. I do not consent to any searches, sir. Look, it's not going to be a big deal. I just need I, I need to make sure that you don't have like a kilo of cocaine back there, and then I'll send you on your way. I do not consent to any searches, sir. Are are you running drugs through this neighborhood? Is that what's going yeah, on am here? Am I being detained, or am I free to go? Yes, you are being detained. This is a traffic stop. Now listen, I'm not trying to give you any trouble here, but I need to look through your car to make sure you don't have anything you're not supposed to. I do not consent to any searches, sir. Okay, so I need to get the dogs down here. Is that what you're telling me? Because I can get them down here, right? And I can get a judge to sign a warrant to get in your trunk. And if I get the dogs down here, it's going to be my supervisor and the entire squad. All right? They're going to be tearing your car apart. If, I get my, if my supervisor is down here while we're tearing your car apart, I'm not going to be able to cut you a break the way I'm trying to do now. Right? I do not consent to any searches. Am I free to go? You're not free to go. Both of you back in the car. Stay there. I'll be back. Fifteen minutes later. <laughs> Here's your ticket for running that stop sign. Don't let me see you around here again. I won't do it again, sir. I heard you say I won't do it again, um, oh, which was an admission of guilt. So, ah. so I should say that. Okay. It's tough to stick to this script, but I would stick right to it. Okay. Do you have to say where you're going when she said I'm going home? You probably don't have to, no. So Once again, you nothing. do not have to answer any yeah. questions that the police ask you other than to identify yourself, which means your name and your address, possibly your birth date, usually your name and address is good enough. Anything else, where you work, where you're going to, who your friend is, no, no, you don't have to answer anything. Is there you anything shouldn't. you can say when they ask you that? Yes, regardless of just being I silent. am going to remain silent. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... In this next skit, um, I am throwing a party at my house, and Earthworm here is my guest at the party. So, in here is my house, and right here, this is the front door of the house, and we don't have an actual door, so we're just gonna like mime it, I guess. So, like, here's the door, and out here, this is the porch. So, I'm throwing this party, we're getting down. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, well, I'll get it. Alright. Oh, it's hey. the cops. Uh, hey. so see what they want, talk to them or something. Hey, officer, how you doing? Hi, I got a noise complaint about this party. Do you mind uh, if I... Can you do that? Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hello, um, yeah, I got a noise complaint about hey, this party. Hey, uh, what are you doing here? Oh, um, your friend let me in. Um, okay, are you sure oh. you can just be... Huh, what's this? Um, that's not mine. I don't, I don't even use illegal drugs. Somebody from the party must have just left it here, I think. Okay, so you're saying that somebody in this party bought this marijuana, but not you. You don't use drugs. Yeah, no, I think somebody probably just left it here. I don't have anything uh -huh. to do with that. Yeah, either. you're under arrest for possession. But it's not even mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, what went wrong in that sketch? I'm still waiting to stop that. Okay. Well, um, who, who opened the house door? To his yeah, yeah. His, the friend opened the door. Just like, or like people in your car shouldn't talk to the cops. Like people in your house shouldn't be opening the door or talking 
to cops. Just like in the car, um, the plain view law applies. So if you have a window, you might want to like draw your blinds. Like if a cop like you know sneaking around, like looking in your window and sees um, something that they think might be like an illegal object, so they can like or an illegal activity or an illegal activity, they could go in and. Um, see it. Um, when uh, cops come to your door, you do have the right to not answer the door. If you do answer the door to um, for the cops, like we suggest, um, taking a witness out with you. Um, of course, um, not letting the cops in the door. Don't talk to the cops like while you're in the house. You go outside again with the restricting access to your property, shutting your door, locking it, having your witness with you to observe any. Um, misconduct to observe you not consenting to searches. You don't have to stay outside unless you're being detained. Like if the cop just like wants to chat you up on your porch, you're allowed to ask am I being detained or am I free to go? And if you're not being detained, you're allowed to like go inside and leave the cop on the por um, your porch all night if that's what they want. Your home is um, very, very, very strongly constitutionally protected. The only way in most situations that cops can get into your home is if A, you let them in or B, um, they have a warrant. If they, oh, yes? Is that any different for apartments versus a house that you own? No? Okay. You, they are either getting into your house by you letting them in, like opening the door for them and like inviting them inside, or um, the, if they have a warrant. If they do say they have a warrant, it's a good idea to ask to uh, see the warrant. Um, they might not give it to you right away or at all, but um, it's always good to ask. Make sure that all of the information on the warrant is correct, that it's the correct address, the correct date, the correct time. If not, then that warrant might be invalid. It can never hurt you to not consent to a search. So even if they do have a warrant, even if it looks legit, it's always a good idea to not consent to any search because the problems come up later. They're, if they're determined to come into your house, either legally or illegally, mm -hmm. you do have the right to prevent an illegal entry into your house, right? You do have the right to physically resist. However, if the cops are determined to come in, be that legally or illegally, they're probably getting in, right? You physically resisting is A, probably not going to stop them, and B, probably going to result in injuries and felony charges. That's all we have to say on that topic. If you want to talk to them and find out what they're there for, um, but you don't want to open your door, can you just talk to them through, through the door? Absolutely, you can talk to them through the door. You can try to, they may not hear you. I have a question. I know you said that you don't consent to them going into your house, but if you own the house, then the part of if they're on her doorstep, they're on part of your property. Can you ask them to leave your property? You definitely can. Uh, you may have varying successes of getting them to leave, but you can absolutely tell them you're not welcome here. Please leave my property. So we're going to redo the skit with someone as the resident, and what's that person going to do differently? Answer the door themselves. Yes. What else is the person going to do correctly? Take a friend. Take a friend out. Good. So if they do decide to go answer the door to the cop, they're going to bring a friend out. And what's the other thing they're going to do? Not consent to Don't consent to searches. Go out on the porch. Go out on the porch and? Close the, Close the door behind you. Good. All right. Who wants to try it? All right. All right. Action. All right. Knock, 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 knock. Oh, I'll get it. Oh, let me get it. Come with me. Okay. Hello. Hello. Good evening. I got a call that um, there's a noise complaint for this party here that's happening. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to uh, need you to turn the music down. Um, that's fine. Excuse me. Um, can, can I, I help you? Yeah, I was um, wondering. This looks like a pretty rowdy party. Can I just um, go inside and make sure? I do not make consent sure? to any searches. Um, I'm just trying to see if like there's any underage drinking here. Like, I'm sure I'm using like any searches. Am I being detained or am I free to go? You're free to go. Thank you. <laughs> Marlon and Caroline were arrested together earlier today in some kind of heist. We're not totally clear on <laughs> And they've been put in separate cells. They haven't seen or talked to each other all day. There's an invisible wall here, but they can't see or hear each other through it. Marlon Cows. 
I suppose yeah, you know you're in a great deal of trouble. Yeah, whatever. Facing some hard time here. <laughs> oh yeah, I got your little friend Caroline Crowland in the other room crying her eyes out, claiming uh, you're the ringleader of this whole operation. That's bullshit. She wouldn't tell you anything. Oh really? Because she's been telling us things for hours. She wouldn't rat on me. Me and her, we're like this, Look, right? she gave we us went to grade school together. Oh really? Okay? Well, you're, she would never your tell you anything. Your close friend just told us Based on information that we got from her, we went to your apartment and we talked to your neighbors who said they saw you loading and unloading supplies used in this operation last night. Okay, see, this is how I know you're full of crap. I wasn't even at my house last night. Oh, right? really? I wasn't even there, so whatever you're trying to make up here is not going to work. Oh, right? really? Just forget it. Okay, well, uh, sit tight, because you're going to be in here for a while. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Caroline Crowland. I suppose you know you're in a great deal of trouble, yeah. facing some hard time. Whatever. Your little friend Marlon Katz in the other cell is crying his eyes out, telling us you're the ringleader of the operation. He wouldn't do that, come on. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, he's been talking to us for hours. He says that you planned this whole thing, the whole thing was done out of Whatever. your house. Wait. He wasn't even at his house last night. Everything, he was at your Wait, house. how'd you know that? I'm telling you, he's been giving us information for hours. It's going to send you to jail for years. No, that's, that's not how it went down. Really? Yeah, no, like, it wasn't my idea, okay? Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know, I sort of thought he was laying a little too much of this blame on you, so I wrote up this statement. See if this uh, kind of sets the record straight. That sort of shows that he was yeah. more in charge. Yeah. Yeah, no, like, it wasn't my idea. I don't know why he would tell yeah, you why don't you? Why don't you sign that, then? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll get you out of here real quick. You recognize that signature? What is this? Wait, wait, she signed this? Yeah. No, this is all wrong. I told it's, you, you're the one she, facing the hard consequences because she's the one cooperating. She came to me. She was she was like, hey, I know you got all those bills. Like, I got this cool thing we could do. We'll make some extra money. Like, it was her idea. I was just basically along for the ride. You know, I sort of got the impression she was laying too much of this on you, so I uh, yeah. drew up this other statement. See if that kind of sets the record straight. I mean, I don't want to snitch. Oh, well, she didn't seem to have that problem. Okay, okay, but if I sign this, I can get immunity, right? Right, we'll send you home tonight. Alright. <laughs> 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 so what, uh, what we call that, or what that is called, is snitch counter snitch. It's where the cops try to convince you that your friend rolled over on you, and they try to convince your friend that you rolled over on them. Um, and ultimately end up screwing you both. Um, and it looks hokey in our little uh, skit that we did here, but this actually works on people. Um, why? Because you're in jail. You're scared. You don't know what kind of time you're facing. Um, the cops have had you in there for who knows how long, and they've been working on your head this whole time. And remember, they're allowed to lie. They're allowed to lie to try and get information out of you. So they may have been telling you all kinds of crazy stuff um, for hours and hours, right? They're allowed to make up fake evidence, they're allowed to make up fake charges that you could be facing, wave around fake signed confessions, right? Fake witnesses, fake DNA, and all of this is in evidence of get in aid of getting you to give them some evidence against yourself that they can use to make whatever they've charged you with stick. Once you're in jail, obviously you're not going to talk your way back out the door, so keep your mouth shut. So you're better off not saying anything to cops or anyone else, because anything that you say while in police custody might be being recorded, right, from inside the cop car to inside the jail cell. So the person sitting next to you in the jail cell could be a plant, or they could be a real person, regular person, that's trying to trade information about you to get themselves a lighter sentence, right? So don't say anything about illegal activities that could get you or someone else in trouble. All you need to say when you're in police custody is, I'm going to remain silent, I want to see a lawyer. That way, they can't use any information that you give them against you. This is you asserting your Fifth Amendment right to not incriminate yourself, right? So it, these words, as legalistic and hokey as they may sound, carry special legal weight. They require the cops to stop questioning you um, in order to get evidence from you. So if you just say the first part, I'm going to remain silent, that causes the cops to stop questioning you right then. But if you say the whole bit, I'm going to remain silent, I want to see a lawyer, that requires them to stop questioning you until you've been before a judge. If you say this, and then you say anything else after that, that's technically you waiving your Fifth Amendment right, and it would allow them to come back and start questioning you again. Uh, but that's okay, because you could just say, I'm going to remain silent, I want to see a lawyer, again, and that's you 
reasserting your Fifth Amendment rights. Anytime you realize that you screwed up and waived a right by accident, you can reassert it, right? Like if they're in the middle of a search, you can always say, I don't consent to a search. Not as good, obviously, as saying it right up front, better than nothing. So a quick little note about signatures. Um, now, it's probably obvious to everyone from that skit, Marlon and Caroline are both going to jail for a long time, right? They, signed, they both signed confessions. If you sign something before you've seen a lawyer, you can never get that signature back, right? You can always sign something later with a lawyer present if you both decide that that's a good idea. Um, so the trick is never sign something that you're not absolutely certain what it is and certain that it's not a confession or a statement of facts. Um, if you're not sure, wait to see a lawyer. Just don't sign it, you know, stay in jail a couple extra days if you have to because if you sign something and it turns out to be something that condemns you, you could be spending a lot of time in jail. Uh, are these same things applicable uh, for minors or is it, is it different for a minor? You know, uh, same constitutional You still rights. have these rights um, as to how the justice system is going to treat you. It may be different, but your rights and how you should use them is exactly the same. Um, so that was the last skit. We're not going to make you guys do any more <laughs> crappy acting. Um, uh, and y'all did all the skits and uh, did very well and you asserted your rights and everything went great, right? And nobody got arrested. Um, but let's be honest, the skits that we're doing here, they're different from real life, right? Like, things don't always work out like this in real life. Um, and the fact is that even people who know their rights, who know all of this material cold, um, and get stopped by the cops, by real cops, really on the street or in their car, um, even people who know this stuff might decide at one time or another, you know what, this time I'm not going to assert my rights, I'm just going to cooperate with the police. What are reasons that somebody might have for doing that? They didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, they didn't know to do anything wrong. It's going to be more of a hassle. Yeah, wanting to avoid hassle. Wouldn't even educate. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've heard, I've heard being afraid of both um, making the cop suspicious uh, or just making the cop angry or, uh, or making a fuss, right? Like making it a bigger deal than it has to be. Um, and often people talk about, well, I didn't do anything wrong or I don't have anything to hide. And all of these are understandable reactions, um, especially when you're dealing with this intimidating authority figure in your face trying to get you to cooperate. Uh, we all have these reactions and it's totally understandable. But even considering all of those things, we still say that it's better, for, it's better and safer for you to assert your rights. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about why we say that. For one thing, the question of um, you didn't do anything wrong. The fact is, uh, you may actually have done something wrong and you didn't know it. Um, and in talking to the police, you may accidentally confess to something that is a crime that you didn't realize was a crime. So for example, if you're walking around and a cop stops you and says, hey, there was a robbery in this neighborhood last night. Where were you at 9 p.m.? And you say, officer, I, was, I wasn't making any trouble. Me and my friends were just playing football in the park. Well, it turns out that park closes at sundown. Um, and maybe you didn't know that or you didn't even think about it. But you just confessed to a crime. Being in the park after dark is a crime. Um, now, let's say that you are some kind of like expert hotshot lawyer, and you know all the laws, and you know there's no way that you were breaking any of them, that you were absolutely you know, obeying the law. Um, in talking to the police, you might accidentally tell a lie um, or a falsehood. Lying to the police is a crime. Um, it could be considered obstruction of justice, um, you know, impeding their investigation, or even if it's not that, um, it could cast additional suspicion on you. Right, so if a cop stops you and they're like, there was a robbery at this corner store across town, um, you know, what do you know about that? And you're like, look, officer, I don't even really go to that part of town. I've never been in that corner store in my entire life. Well, it turns out six months ago, you and your friends were maybe a little drunk and you went in that corner store to get some cigarettes and you forgot all about it, right? But there's security camera footage of you being in the corner store. Not illegal. Right? It's not illegal to have been in a corner store. That's not a crime. Um, but the fact that you told false information to the police um, now puts you in a situation where you might be accused of impeding their investigation. Or beyond that, 
you may now be their top suspect. Because why would you have lied about that? Right? Like, try explaining that to a jury. Why would you lie and say that you weren't at this store? Now, beyond all those things, even if you're sure that all of your statements are completely true and none of them could possibly be a confession to a crime, true statements that you make to the police can be used to cast more suspicion on you. So, for example, if you get stopped and you're being questioned about some vandalism that's been done, and you say, look, officer, me and my friends are into, like, the graffiti hip-hop scene, but we would never vandalize anybody's property. We only write on legal balls, you know, we're respectful of the law. What do you think that cop's going to go write in his little notebook? He's going to write... Him and friends are into graffiti, and that's it, right? Because the police are not the judge. They're not there to decide if you're innocent or guilty. They are only there to gather evidence about your guilt. So you can tell them, you know, an entire extended story about how you couldn't possibly have done it, and they're going to ignore everything that you say except the one sentence which could cast some suspicion on you. We have a saying, you can't talk your way out of an arrest, but you can talk your way into an arrest. Uh, which is to say, it's very rare that you're in a situation with the cops where they have enough evidence to arrest you, but then you say something to them that makes them go, oh, well in that case, go ahead, you know, obviously you're innocent. But it's very common that the cops don't have enough evidence to arrest you, and then something that you say gives them what they need to then go ahead and do it. And so a similar kind of thing goes for, um, for thinking you have nothing to hide. Right? You may think that you don't have any illegal items on you, but you might be wrong. Um, for one thing, it's a really bad time to find out that your friend who borrowed your jacket left um, a pot seed in the pocket before they gave it back to you. You don't want to be finding that out as the cops are rifling through your jacket. And beyond that, even if you don't have any friends who do anything illegal and you know that your stuff is totally clean, uh, there's all kinds of weird laws about contraband. The one that we often use is, what's the legal limit on the length of a pocket knife blade in Atlanta City? 2.5 inches? 2.5, 3, we've sometimes heard like the length of the palm of your hand or something, but <laughs> it must be variable. Um, we don't actually know, um, and it sounds like you guys don't know for sure either. Um, and it varies between county, between cities, um, and again, you don't want to be finding out the answer to that question while they're pulling the thing out of your pocket or out of your backpack, right? Um, so you may have illegal items. Now, you may know that you have absolutely nothing illegal, but again, legal items that you have could be used to cast suspicion on you. Maybe the cops stopped you and you're just coming back from your waitressing job where you got a bunch of tips, so you got a bunch of cash. Cops may decide that you are on your way to a drug deal or that you just got back from a drug deal, that's why you have all this cash. They know that if they can get you to talk for long enough, eventually you're going to slip up somehow, and they're going to get something from one of these different categories that they can use to get you in trouble. Um, so it's much safer, even if you think that you've done nothing wrong, to just say, I'm going to remain silent, because the conversation that never happens <coughs> can't get you in trouble. And similarly, even if you think that you have nothing to hide, it's much safer to just say, I don't consent to any searches, because if a search doesn't happen, then none of those things that I was talking about are even going to come up. You're not going to have to worry about that. The reality is, your constitutional rights are protected. You can't be punished for using them. Um, if you could, they wouldn't be your rights, if you think about it. Um, so, for example, if a cop stops you and wants you to answer questions, and you exercise your right to remain silent, the cop then can't take further action against you. The cop can't say, oh, well, if you won't answer my questions, then I'm going to detain you, or then I'm going to search your bag. It's not allowed. Similarly, if you won't allow them to search your vehicle, they can't arrest you for doing that. They can't say, if you won't let me search, you're going to jail. Um, and if they do, which sometimes they actually do, you have a lawsuit. Right. It, it would be illegal for them to do that. Um, and, in fact, your rights are so strongly protected that if evidence is brought against you in court that's been obtained illegally, right, so if you said that you don't consent to a search and they searched anyway, uh, that evidence is called, what, fruit of the poisonous tree? Uh, which means that it's inadmissible in court. And similarly, the cops can't even bring up the fact that you've asserted your rights when they make their case against you in court. So if I, if I say... I refuse a search now, and the uh, police search my car anyway. Now, what proof will I have 
to say that I did and say it was okay? Yeah. That's a good question. That's why we recommend that when you say you refuse a search, uh, you say it so that witnesses around can hear. Okay, nobody's there. Right. Then me. you're in a tough situation. And we'll talk about okay. how cop watch relates to that. Um, like like filming the police to gather evidence. Uh, we'll talk about that at the end of the training, but that's a very good point. I'm not going to lie to you. If you assert your rights, it may make the cops angry at you. Um, it may make them actually angry, or they may pretend to be angry, because cops are trained in how to manipulate people. And one of the ways that they do that is they pretend like they're angry. They pretend like they're this close to just beating the shit out of you. Um, sometimes they are. Sure. Uh, but they may not necessarily act angry either. They may act super friendly. They may act totally bureaucratic. They may act insistent. They may act polite. They may act like you're, they're your best buddy and they're trying to help you out. Um, they may also act angry. And it's understandable that when you get stopped by the cops, if you're on the street, if you're you know driving your car, if you're in your house, you want to get through the interaction quickly. Nobody wants to have like this big fuss with the police, especially if your mind's on something else. You just don't want to bother. But the problem is that when you cooperate with the police like that, when you waive your rights, you are giving up your power to the police. And you're hoping that they are going to take pity on you. You're, you're giving them all the power that they need to abuse you, to violate your rights, and possibly to arrest you. And you're hoping that by doing that, you've gained enough of their favor that they're going to decide not to do anything to you. Um, and sometimes that works. Especially it works if you maybe look like you got some money, or you have the right color skin, or you're particularly attractive. You know, there's like different people have different experiences. But the bottom line is, there are cops out there who, for whatever reason, have decided before they even start talking to you that you're going down. And that may be because they don't like the look of you. That may be because they don't like the political ideals that you stand for. It may be because they have a quota and they just need to make a certain number of arrests, right? Or it may be because they have some serious anger issues and they want to take it out on somebody. There, there's no like special identifier for them. There's no way to know which cop is the one who's going to smile and send you on your way when you cooperate and which cop is going to abuse everything that you give them to build a case against you, whether you did anything wrong or not, and put you in jail. So we have no choice but to assume that every cop who approaches us is this person who constitutes a very serious threat against our freedom, who could potentially abuse our rights very badly. Like, when you look at it that way, I think it becomes clear that it's not a question of do I want to deal with an angry authority figure, or do I want to get through this thing quickly and smoothly. It's a question of... Do I want to deal with this person who's going to be grumpy and yell at me? Or do I want to put myself in a situation where I may end up arrested and in jail for the night? Or for the next week? Or for the next 10 years? Because these are things that happen to people who waive their rights. And when you see the situation that way, I think it becomes much more obvious which is the safer option. What if I'm trying to assert my rights? but I'm alone and there's nobody to know that I refuse to search or something like that. So one of the strategies that we use, we're, we're all members of Copwatch, and in addition to trying to teach people about their rights, um, we film the police when they're interacting with the public to make sure that they have to respect these rights. Because as we know, cops violate people's rights all the time. They beat people up, they kill people, and sometimes they get away with it. Uh, often they get away with it. Uh, so what we do, basically, is anytime cops are interacting with the public, we film everything the cops are doing. Um, so that that way, hopefully, if you are you know, being pulled over, um, there's a, a video record of what happened, what you said, and what the cops tried to do. Um, in addition to us doing that, we're trying to spread that as a practice to everybody, so that everybody both knows what their rights are in terms of filming the cops, and is prepared to do it, both for themselves and for other people that they see getting hassled by the cops. Uh, we actually have a whole other training, as Earthworm talked about at the beginning, um, that builds on this one, builds on what your basic rights are, and teaches you how to film the police in a way that's safe, that's legal, and that's effective at disrupting their ability to violate people's rights. You know, you have the, kind of the highlights up there. Can you do that of your second speech, kind of now? I think that might be helpful. Well, don't talk to the cops. Don't talk to the cops. The short story is you I have mean, absolutely like, how do you, like cuz like I have a I have a phone, you know, that can record. Right. The the like, cliff notes, the most important thing is 
Uh, you I'm have absolutely police. the right to film the police okay. in the U.S. Um, you have the right to film any person in public, including the police, um, and they cannot order you to stop. Um, in particular, in Atlanta, the police department have policies which prevent them from interfering with your right. Now, that doesn't mean that they won't beat the crap out of you for trying to film them. It just means that would be illegal. If, if you do run into that situation where, it's a cop, where a cop has, you know, not, not paid attention to your not consenting, and uh, you end up in, in court, that's going to be a matter of fact that's going to go to the jury. And so if you can bring up your friend, and your friend goes, yeah, this guy, every day he reminds me not to consent to searches. You know, he has a t-shirt that says, you know, I don't consent to searches. That's going to, the jury's going to hear that. And they're going to go, oh, maybe these officers are lying when they say he didn't consent to assert it. This guy sounds like he's a guy who knows his rights. If you can say, hey, I went to this Know Your Rights workshop, <laughs> you know, on this, I've talked to these people, that's all going to help you in the eyes of the jury. So you're asking the judge, really, just let that money go, he can raise money. <laughs> you guys want to know. Are there questions, I comments? Yeah, just emphasize the need to film. I, like, I almost wanted to clap after every skit. I thought they were on the point, and the film was really good, but... The filming, I think, is very key, so I would encourage everybody to film all your interactions with police employees. And when I am being pulled over by the police or stopped by the police, um, I run the audio recorder on my phone and I don't tell them that it's running just because I have always felt that if I'm like trying to conduct myself like with them and I'm like filming them, camera in their face, that they could potentially just like grab the camera and turn it off and destroy the evidence or whatever. Um, Another way to get around that would be using like a live stream app that puts the video on a server so that they can't confiscate your camera and destroy it. And even informing them, I am videotaping you and this it's streaming to a server, you can't, you know, whatever. Um, I don't know how anybody feels about that. I think you have, don't you have to let the officer know that you're recording them? George and George, you know. It's a state law, it's a state by state. Changes yeah, it's by state. It's by state, but no time in any state that somebody's been arrested for doing that, like the wiretapping, has that actually held up. And there have been some pretty high, not the Supreme Court, but pretty high courts that have been like, yeah, that's not, like, you're allowed to film the cops. While it's your right, there are a lot of risks and benefits associated with it. So it's something we encourage people to, like, learn more about, you know, come to our training, do more research online, check out the CopLock website. Like, you know, find out about it before you just, like, jump in and start filming cops. I just do audio, and I have it streamed to a server, so they never have to know that I'm doing it. And should they violate my rights in that stop, I then know that I have an account online where this audio is, and I can access it later for my lawyer or court or whatever. So. Thank you, guys. Thank you.